Hello guys, how's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Sunday, 7.43 a.m. That's California time, April 27, 2025. I am the Earth Master and uh, have Missy Mimi's here with me. Say hi, Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? We shouldn't have an echo this time. I know last night when I was doing the update, we had a, uh, a little microphone uh, error going on there. But hey, I think we got it fixed now. We are still out here on location and, um, well out uh, away from home just kind of doing uh, some on site uh, geology stuff here what's going on for earthquake activity latest shows a 1.1 across california so let's go ahead and check out west coast activity first here uh, where a uh, number of earthquakes are lighting up out here in the last hour in the red circles nothing above 2.5 aside from the area up north around the geysers but uh, surprisingly, there's actually no geyser activity up there whatsoever. Why they call it the geysers, I don't know, but it's not. There's no geysers up there. Uh, that is associated with the uh, hydrothermal plants up there. Taking advantage of the well heated areas down below the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. A little swarm of activity here off the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Park-filled segment of the San Andreas Fault remains strained, and uh, we'll likely see a six-pointer out here very soon. We chatted about this here a couple videos back. Uh, some activity on the Garlock Fault shear zone as well. And uh, for Southern California in general, no major swarms going on. A couple earthquakes off the San Diego area, at least one here late last night. Had another one further up north yesterday. Uh, no major swarming there around the San Andreas Fault or the Brawley Seismic Zone for now. Cascadia Subduction Zone continues to sleep, and uh, nothing major going on there across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Idaho seeing some activity stirring up here across these fault systems, various faults that uh, run up here up towards the Yellowstone region. Yellowstone itself not uh, seeing too much activity. Let me go double check this here real quick see what we got for Yellowstone, which is, uh, where's my Yellowstone map here? I'm on my different computer, so it's going to take me a, there we go. Not a whole lot going on, as you can see here as well. Um, one earthquake there in Lake Butte, the Promontory, Purple Mountain. I believe that's the earthquake there from last night around Idaho, 3.3. Uh, I'm Actually, not last night. It was uh, yesterday morning, so that would match the time period there for a 3.3. One earthquake up in the Great Plains, up around uh, South Dakota. That's going on up there in Burke, South Dakota area. 2.6 earthquake outside of Gregory. Um, not too often do we get earthquake activity out here, but it looks like a little bit of movement stirring up here in the last hour. Underneath, uh, underneath a field up there. I don't see any... Uh, oil wells whatsoever but there is oh uh, these look like maybe some grain silos but uh a little earthquake activity a little 2.6 in south dakota Let's see if anybody felt this earthquake uh nothing showing up has been reviewed so it's a legit earthquake all right backing out of here seeing what else we got here across the country some severe weather in uh in the works out here across this area Today and uh, specifically tomorrow up around the Iowa area. I'll get to that here in a second. Oil fields out in Texas still getting hit. Nothing going on there across the rest of the country. Puerto Rico Trench continues to swarm with a number of earthquakes out there. Uh, pretty good cluster of earthquake activity out here uh, in a little swarm fashion, obviously. Right at the uh, Puerto Rico Trench. This is a very dynamic area. You got the Mariotos Trough down south here. And then the Puerto Rico Trench up here, putting a little squeeze, raising up this land. Uh, I think we may be in store here for some larger activity uh, within this area soon. Just to just do all everything that's going on here around the Caribbean plate recently, uh, including that swarm uh, that's taking place here north of Puerto Rico right now. Also, some newer activity here across the Mariana Trench. This one pretty deep, 4.3, 255 miles deep into the subduction zone right here. That's obviously going to be putting the strain potentially upstream, uh, but also watch areas here across the western boundaries of the Pacific or the uh, Filipino plate there. Alaska, a number of earthquakes coming in. I've seen a, a bunch of threes stirring up here, as far as I know. Let's see, uh, there they are. Quite a few threes this morning there across the uh, Alaska area. 
nothing big, but definitely a noticeable increase here across Alaska recently. Uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, New Zealand region, got to be in the mix here soon as far as larger activity eventually. And I say that because I uh, look down south here late last or early this morning, a 5.9 earthquake striking outside the west, west of Macquarie Island region. That uh, sits off the plate boundary from New Zealand, obviously. Uh, but uh, a short time later, 4.6. And uh, some earlier earthquake activity there along the Kermadec Trench from yesterday put New Zealand in a hot spot zone uh, for some earthquake activity. Um, looks like prior to the Macquarie Island earthquake activity, 4.1 last night, 148 miles deep into the... Uh, well, that's going to be the uh, Hikurangi subduction zone that sits there off the east coast of the uh, New Zealand region. So watch New Zealand specifically here just because of all the activity happening around that area. So that 5.9, I believe, is going to take the cake there for the largest earthquake in the last 24 hours and the largest one after midnight so far today. Uh, so we'll continue to watch things as, uh, well, it's kind of an active day out here. Nothing major going on as far as West Coast activity goes, but, uh, you know, 5.9 is a decent size earthquake. Nothing going on out there in the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, for the rest of the area out here, got uh, just some typical threes and fours scattered out and about for this uh, beautiful Sunday. Let's see what we got here for space weather activity. I know it's been kind of on the uh, quiet side. I'm hoping for a change. That's all we can do, right? Well, it's pretty much flatline, though. Look at this. We're uh, just barely floating above the sea level threshold. Uh, just not a whole lot. This almost looks like solar minimum. Uh, the only difference is we have a number of sunspots out here. We have quite a few sunspots, but there's uh, pretty quiet conditions as far as any complexity goes. Clear-cut separation there of the core. Not a whole lot of redevelop redevelopment there within those uh, sunspots. So I'm um, not really expecting much in terms of any stronger flares uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, flare threat, 1% chance or less. M flare, 25% chance. That's probably reasonable. I got to change mine there at home on the uh, M flare chart. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on for as solar flare activity goes. Uh, no major auroras there in the forecast either, folks. So... So we'll see what happens in the uh, coming days. Hopefully we'll get some different sunspots out there. Uh, far as, let's see, my next close approach asteroids here. Let's check out the next five of them. Got, uh, let's see if we got anything close coming up. Look at this, 32-foot bus size asteroid. April 28, 211,000 miles. That's uh, fairly close, but everything else looks uh, like millions of miles away. So even then, though, this uh, this one down here is a considerably safe distance. Nothing worth noting as far as uh, any deep observation or studies of that asteroid for now. Uh, they added a slight risk out here for a good portion of the southern plains northward for uh, some tornado hail and wind threats. Tomorrow looks to be a big day with a uh, potential tornado outbreak up north. Um, we'll watch and see how this goes. Don't take this lightly. This is from the Storm Prediction Center. Big time tornado threat tomorrow across these areas. Wind and some big time hail threats on a broad scale as well. Uh, this is a massive region of severe potential tomorrow. Uh, so just be weather aware and stay alert. Got a busy week coming up there for severe weather. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing out here right now. We are actually out in uh, in the Southern Plains area right now, um, debating on if I want to drive uh, up north here to cover this event. Um, you know, not only for the channel here, but I also do reports uh, to the National Weather Service on any type of severe weather that I'm observing, but uh, there's a little uncertainty on if this is going to actually take place here tomorrow. Um, I'm seeing a lot more Cape values down south here uh, towards Oklahoma and Texas than I am up north, um, but this area that's got the 30% chance or 15%, 10% hatched area has the most likelihood of 
when things do develop or if they develop that you get those rotation uh, supercells going on that can produce tornadoes fairly easily when they start rotating in this area. Well, there's still a, a tornado threat down south, but I'm thinking here me and Missy Mimi's are going to cover uh, this area down south into Texas, maybe Oklahoma, uh, for tomorrow's event. Just uh, I'm basing my observation on Cape values and uh, the dry line potential that's down here. A lot of moisture. It's 73 degrees, uh, super high dew point right now here where I'm at. I'm just outside of uh, outside of Lubbock, Texas here. We're just going to probably hang out here in this area today and then tomorrow. Uh, probably about the same thing. But it, it looks to be a rinse and repeat type of scenario across this area of the Southern Plains over the next few days. But, you know, just, just be on guard tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Hopefully this is a bust. And I say that because we don't want any widespread tornado outbreaks out there. But, the, you know, almost looks like that's what's going to happen here on the Storm Prediction Center as far as their wording goes. But also at the same time, um, I'm hoping that will uh, not happen the way it's showing up here. It's just kind of crazy. Um, so we'll see how this uh, plays out. But anyway, yeah, that's what we're doing. We are out here, you know, just kind of doing a little R&R, &R, but also at the same time, um, observing and reporting the weather that takes place out here. Um, I am a Skywarn spotter uh, for the National Weather Service, so any severe development that I see, I report to the National Weather Service. That way they can get out their um, uh, emergency alert system to the public. So that's uh, kind of what I do. Uh, in the springtime when I come out here, also the R&R. &R. We, like, uh, we actually love Texas area. It's beautiful, nice and green down here right now, warm and humid. Mimi's kind of environment. Mm -hmm. She loves the humidity and the heat, and it's not bad. We also love our birds down there. We love the... Uh, the great-tailed grackles. The great-tailed grackers. The grack <laughs> grackers. <laughs> grackles, right? Grackles, yes. Yeah, they're uh, beautiful, smart birds, and uh, we don't have a whole lot of them out there where I live in Northern California. So we, I don't know. They, Texas has a lot of wildlife out here, including the beautiful rattlesnake, <laughs> which Mimi does not, she does not like that whatsoever. But I, I like to observe it at a distance there. So still a beautiful creature, right? All right. So, um, yeah, if anything else pops up here, folks, we'll obviously uh, jump on board. I do have access here to my laptop. And, of course, I can jump here on my phone and provide any quick need-be updates. Uh, we'll just keep an eye on New Zealand right now. It really looks like it wants to move with all this adjustment going on south and up north. Deeper activity underneath North Island. Eventually, this zone right here, the Hikarangi subduction zone, is going to show a little bit of activity. Uh, or potentially further down the line there across the Alpine Fault. We'll see how it goes. But uh, have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on uh, this evening. I'd like to say, unless something major happens, have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We're going to be out here, you know, potentially live streaming any events out here as well that we see, uh, you know, um, that may be a that folks may want to view out here. We do have quite a few viewers that enjoy watching our weather live streams. So uh, we may be out here live streaming the weather here from Texas today and tomorrow over the next few days. Have a good one, guys. Have a good day, guys. We'll see you a little bit later. I'm going to make Missy Mimi's do an update here. <laughs> you used to. Oh, yeah. Right, need to get you back on here, providing a little few updates here. She's knowledgeable in earthquake stuff and and plate tectonics, so don't let her fool you. She's got her own channel. She likes to sing and do covers and stuff like that, but she's knowledgeable in, in the geology and and physical science stuff. So, all right, I'm out of here. Enough yakking. Enjoy your Sunday well, morning. Still, take care. <laughs>